Alexia Roberts, and today I'm going to be talking about deviant sex. That's the topic I chose. So what is sexual deviance? Sexual deviance is defined as a concept that refers to behaviors where individuals seek erotic gratification through means that are considered odd, different, or unacceptable to either most people or some people in one's community. So when I was trying to look up a definition about what exactly is considered sexually deviant, um, it basically said that there's not, it's not a very strict term because what one person finds erotically gratifying, another person might not find to be, and they might find it to be disgusting or just not approve of it in general. So when I was looking up exactly what it meant, I did find a funny thing on a Yahoo Answers or something, and it was just like, does anyone else consider a naked penguin to be very sexy? And then it was just like, well, somebody has to, otherwise, how did we get baby naked penguins? Yeah, I thought it was pretty funny. And that's why I put the penguin from Club Penguin. So, when looking up this topic, uh, a lot of the studies I was looking at included a lot of terms that I never learned, at least with my basic health knowledge. I've never really had to learn any of these because I've never had to research fetishes before. So some of the terms were voyeurism, fetishism, exhibitionism, fraturism, and masochism. So voyeurism is the practice of gaining sexual pleasure from watching others while they are naked or engaged in sexual activity. So basically if you watch porn, you're probably into voyeurism. And then fetishism is a form of sexual behavior in which gratification is linked with an abnormal degree to a particular object or body part. I mean, certain people are attracted to certain parts on people. Then there's exhibitionism, which is exposing the genitals to become sexually excited or having sexual desires to be observed by others during sexual activity. That one I already knew about, but the other ones I've never heard about really in my life. I knew it was a thing, but didn't know a term to go with it. And there's fracturism, an interest in rubbing one's pelvic area against a non-consenting individual for sexual pleasure. This is highly illegal. I do not advise doing it. I mean, it does say non-consenting, so though I might find it weird, other people might be turned on by that. And then there's ma ma masochism, which sometimes goes with, like, and basically enjoying experiencing pain, which some people are into, like I've heard people say they're into it. So one of the studies I was looking at that we're going to talk about today had 1,040 people. I believe they were from all from Britain, but like been around the world. I say that's a pretty good amount of people to try to do a survey on just to see what people admit to and like what they're into. So about 46% of people, so really close to 50% of them, admitted, admitted to having sexually abnormal desires. Well. 33.9% of the people surveyed have actually engaged in the abnormal activity because it's it's one thing to look at like what you're into and like think about what you're into and it's one thing to do it because like some th some people are into things that are like illegal or like I guess if you're into it not that it's a, not that I think it's okay you're still not doing the act itself which would the act would probably be highly illegal so yeah as I said. Um, I talked about voyeurism, fetishism, exhibitionism, fracturism, masochism. It also was talking a little bit about sadism, transvestism, and what I thought was weird that it was also talking about sex with a child, which is highly illegal, as everybody knows, but like that's another like deviant sex topic. So in the survey, the first numbers, so like for voyeurism, 46.3%. Are people who have like thought or admitted to like having thoughts about voyeurism. While the actual parentheses with the 34.5% of them, they actually like have like partaken in the act or like done it. So because it's one thing to think it and it's one thing to do it. You can't tell mostly on the left column there's higher numbers because it's one thing as I said to think it, but then when people actually do it, especially with the sex with the child one, which was a little bit astonishing with me because I know it's not that common, even though it's a terrible thing. But it's still like 0.6%. So people like actually like think about doing it, 
well, 0.4% of them actually have done it. And that's just from a survey of 1,040 people, which is still really pretty scary to think about. So as I was talking, so just for some of these, we can do like, for like fetishes, fetish All right, now let's get back to it now that I apparently took a, a teacher's classroom. All right, so I think we're about done with the results from the study. I mean, it is pretty interesting that a lot of people have like partaken in a lot of these, which I didn't think the numbers would be as high, but then again, I might just be naive. So some other statistics that I found, I don't know how many people participated in this, but they decided to do a survey on more about college students and like basically what they're into. So 60% of college men have fantasized about sadism and bondage. Now sadism I have not talked about. So that's sexual excitement from inflicting physical or psychological pain on others. And then bondage, which a lot of people already know what that is, like I already knew what that was, is the practice of consensually tying, binding, or restraining a partner for stimulation. So like about 60% of males admitted to that, which is just something that's never really talked about, at least among people that I know. I don't know if it's different for your guys' friend groups. And then also 50% of female college students said they had fantasized about an episode in which they're either submitted to forcefully or being sexually victimized. Now it's one thing to, it's one thing for people to fantasize about it and it's one thing to do it again. Like a lot of these things are highly illegal. Like if you actually sexually victimize someone and it's not consensual, it's definitely, you're definitely going to jail for that one. So then, there was one more survey I was looking at, I think it was about a thousand people again, but basically it was just talking about what men and women fantasize about. They're not very different from each other, I would say. They're pretty much, they're relatively similar. I mean, some of them I thought was pretty or like I wouldn't have thought of, like for the men, my bottom one says having sex in a romantic location, like on a deserted beach, like no offense to men, I probably wouldn't think that that would have been what 78.4% of them were thinking about, like not that it's wrong to think about it, it's just what I wouldn't think about because I had no idea what I was doing when I got into this project. And then just like for women, they also have a common like doing it on a romantic location, like a deserted beach, but they're 84% of them. So like there's some things that are actually really, they're just alike, but then there's some of them be, being a lot more different, just like ejaculating on my sexual partner. Like, I mean, women can't really do that, but like they still have cer certain things that they have on their list that others don't. But once again, they still have a lot of similarities in them. It's just like, whatever people are into, which isn't necessarily wrong as long as it's legal. So I have a sh short video. On the crime watch, two Santa Clara County women are behind bars tonight, accused of having sex with underage teenage boys. Tina Parani and Talia Sisko were arrested. What is that? Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. So this video is more like what is actually considered to be or what's considered to actually be like illegal. Because once again, it's one thing to think one thing and it's one thing to do it. On the crime watch, two Santa Clara County women are behind bars tonight, accused of having sex with underage teenage boys. Tina Parani and Talia Sisko were arrested yesterday. The investigation has taken a lot of strange twists. Action News reporter Robert Condon has more. They are best friends have been since their days at Saratoga High School. Still together, Talia Sisko of Saratoga and Tina Parani of San Jose, now 23-year-olds, face multiple felony charges for allegedly having sex with underage teenage boys. 
Investigators say the two women bragged and joked about the alleged acts. Using words such as sexual deviance and um, such as going to hell because of their actions. Detectives for the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office say they launched a criminal investigation back on April 7th after getting tipped to alleged sexual relationships between the women and several boys, all 15 or 16 years old. It's absolutely outrageous that they think that this is funny. This is a crime and they're predators. Susco was arrested here at her family home in Saratoga, where detectives say much of the sexual activity took place. We did not get a response when we knocked on the door. She was also a student teacher at Bernal Middle School in San Jose, but detectives say they have not found any connection to any students there. The school district told detectives Cisco has been barred from any contact with students. Investigators are now asking the public for help in finding a fourth victim. They say the suspects and victims have vague family connections. They're all intertwined somehow through uh, a circle of uh, family friends. For other reporting, investigators say that Cisco is being held without bail because of the number of charges against her. Karate posted $60,000 bail and was released. Both are scheduled to be in court on Monday. Yeah, I was trying to find a video about like sexual deviance and like, I mean, that one was just like the most common one that I could find about people getting into things that are illegal. And they even knew what they were doing, which makes it even more, especially since one of them wanted to become a teacher, which can't become a teacher, especially if you think that something like that's funny. All right, so we'll go back to the presentation. So what we can learn from this video, it's okay to be into something that's considered sexually deviant, but be conscious of the law. Like, there are laws in place, and it's for the safety of others, too, not just yourself. Uh, be aware that not everyone's going to be into what you're into, so if anything, just talk to your partner about what they're into, because they might not be comfortable with what you're comfortable with, vice versa. And also, be conscious of the difference between fantasy and reality. It's like, I guess it's okay to, to think a certain way, but like, once again, when it comes to the law or like actually like damaging somebody, you probably should take a step back. All right, so these are my sources. Hope you guys enjoyed my presentation. Did not think this was about what I was presenting on, but you know, I think it went pretty good. All right, thank you. All right, so I've officially been kicked out of that classroom and interrupted twice, so now we're gonna finish this at home. So sorry for the poor quality. So some of my questions for discussion, because I know we still need a discussion portion, is my first question is, would you consider sexual deviance? to be a mental disorder? If so, which deviances or what deviates from the norm? What would actually would you consider to be a mental disorder? And which ones would probably be considered like okay? And then my second question is what causes a person to de develop sexual deviations that p others don't typically have? Like what causes, I know one of the sexual deviations that I talked about a little bit was pedophilia. So what makes one person like be wired to think one way and basically be a pedophile while another person's just maybe really into like somebody's arms or something like that. And then lastly for my last question is, do you think countries all around the world would have similar results when it comes to researching sexual deviances? It's more of a newer topic because before people used to not talk as much about sex as they do now. But I was just kind of relating that back to one of my slides where I was talking about how 60% of college males have fantasized about sadism or bondage. And then also for 50% of female college students said they fantasize about an episode in which they have been submitted to force or been sexually victimized. Do you think that's a common thing all around? Or do you think that certain countries or certain areas around the globe have different interests. All right, so that's the end of my presentation. Thank you.